You're listening to Southern California's best rock. Best rock. Best rock. Best rock. Best rock. The legendary 95.5 KLOS. And KLOS HD1. Los Angeles. It is noon. It's time for the takeover. I am joined today uh, by one of, I guess you could say, one of the greatest selling guitarists of all time. Certainly uh, an author of a song that is all time canon and the current owner of the number one classic rock song in America, Mr. Don Felder is here for the takeover. Welcome, Don. Thank you, Derek. It's a pleasure to be back at KLS. We're, we're stoked to have you. You've been a great friend to the station uh, over the years. And and even today, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the KLS concert series date you got coming up in a little uh-huh. bit. Uh, but I wanted to mention that number one song. That's pretty cool, right? To have a number one song in this day and age? It's uh, it's quite an honor to be a classic to, to begin with, much less be a classic on classic rock radio. Uh, <laughs> number one is like the best you can do on classic rock radio, so it's quite a pleasure for me. So uh, I'm holding the new album, Road to Forever. This is the extended edition. That's right, yeah. How, how do you extend a Road to Forever? Well, when I originally recorded the CD, I wrote and recorded 16 songs for it. And when it came time to actually do the final artwork and the pressing, the mechanical, uh, physical property of the CD, I got a call from the record company and my business management that said, hey, we need an exclusive for Amazon, and we need an exclusive for iTunes, we need an exclusive for Japan. So we had to pull four songs off of the CD originally, and they were exclusive songs, only available at certain, like Amazon, that sort of stuff. And when we started to do this tour, I said, let's repackage this thing the way it should be packaged with all 16 songs on it and re-release it. So that's why it's the extended edition. It's crazy these days. After you, you got to give something to everybody. You know? The lesson is i got to record 20 or 25. <laughs> songs next time. <laughs> <laughs> like, Oprah, you get a song. You get a song. All right. Uh, this is uh, You Don't Have Me. Don Feld, everybody. Hey, we're so excited for you to join us, and I'm really stoked to check this out. It's uh, Kayla West. It's the man who just played that song. Don Felder is here doing a takeover. Very nice. How, how do you like being uh, your own guy as opposed to the dynamic of playing in a band? Well, you know, it has both pros and cons. Honestly, at my age, I try to balance all my public and professional life, or I can't spend all my time on the road, or my personal life suffers, and I don't have relationships with my loved ones, and my kids, and my family, and that sort of stuff, and friends. And if I spend too much time doing personal stuff, my professional life uh, suffers. So it's a great act to be able to balance the two and be happy at this time in my life doing both. Yeah, you know, it's, and that's a balance a lot of people just forget in life. Like sometimes the people will just sort of forget to actually like have a personal life and make time for it. Yeah, absolutely. During the Eagles, I mean, we were on the road 10 and a half, 11 months out of the year and my kids grew up for the first eight or 10 years of their life without a dad. Yeah. So, you know, it's important to maintain those connections. That was pre-iPhone, pre-fax, uh, pre-anything, you know, you, you couldn't t- you couldn't communicate with those people at all, you know, your family. Yeah, I bet FaceTime is totally yeah. like change, <laughs> is. change the way yeah. the road works Skype, for sure. Yeah, you oh, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe change the whole group beat system, too. I'm not that you know about that. I'm just I saying. I don't know anything about that at all. <laughs> I remember vague reminiscence from the 70s about that, but not anything recent. Right, right. <laughs> all right, uh, we're going to play uh, another record now. This is uh, one you've picked out, and I- I'm-, I'm excited about this because... Uh, you've got connections to both artists in the song, so we'll play the record. We'll come back and and tell you a little bit about uh, Don's relationship with Stevie Nicks and Tom Petty. Don and I uh, reminiscing. We happen to share uh, some time spent in the uh, city of Gainesville, Florida, which is a place uh, unlike any other. Uh, and Gainesville, home to Tom Petty. And you guys actually knew each other back in the Yeah, day, right? I worked in this store called Lippa Music uh, for, I think, a buck fifty an hour or something there, selling guitars, teaching guitars, cleaning guitar, uh, teaching stuff to students. And one day Tommy came in, uh, this kind of scraggly, blonde headed, buck tooth kid came in and wanted guitar lessons. He was in a band called the Rucker Brothers Band at the time, but he was playing bass, and he thought it was kind of dorky to play bass. He wanted to play guitar in front of the band, so I started teaching him guitar and working with his band, the Rucker Brothers Band, and for probably about a year, year and a half, something like that. And then I also wound up later, uh, when the Eagles and Fleetwood Mac went on tour for the summer, we became friends with everybody in that band. I think Don Henley was dating Stevie Nicks and one thing or another, and then Joe was dating Stevie Nicks, and it seemed like everybody dated Stevie at one time or another. <laughs> but then uh, later, when she was working in the studio on a record, she asked me if I'd come down and play on a couple of her tracks. So that song has both of my connections in it, both Stevie and Tommy. That's really cool. So when you knew Tom Petty as like a teenager, like did you see Promise, or was he just another guy you were giving guitar lessons to? Well, you know, I'd go see his live shows, because I 
I was working with both of those guitar players and himself, and he would get on stage and flip his long blonde hair, and the girls would go, oh my God, he's so great, look at that. And I would go, are you listening to him sing? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, they're not, which is a good hit for you fellas out there. He wasn't a great singer, and he wasn't a great guitar player, but he could really sell his songs really well on stage. His performance and just uh, uh, his impression he left on you was really good. And he turned out to be a great songwriter. Not a great guitar player, but a great songwriter. He's an all-world yeah. uh, songwriter for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Speaking of songwriting, uh, you have written a song called Hotel California that I think people are familiar with. Uh-huh. Brand new version of this song that we have, we're going to play for you on the other side of the break. But first, I want you to tell me like, what inspired you to go back and, and revisit this thing. Well, this is kind of the third version of it. The first version I wrote in, I think, uh, 75 or something for the original record. And Don Henley and uh, Glenn Fry co-wrote some of the lyrics with me. Uh, I wrote all the music for the track. And then uh, later, when we decided during the Unplug era on MTV to do an acoustic version of it, I rearranged the song for Hell Freezes Over for that LP and DVD. And then when we started to do this tour, they wanted to put out the soundtrack of Summer CD that has Foreigner songs on it, stick songs on it, some of my songs on it as well, and somebody brought up the idea of redoing another version of Hotel California, and I thought, wow, there's great singers in these other bands, there's great guitar players, what a fabulous idea, let's try to do another rendition or another version of this song, and we did, I completely rearranged the song, uh, Tom... Uh, Tommy Shaw plays one of the guitar solos on the end. Nick Jones plays one of the guitar solos in. Kelly Hansen and Tommy Shaw and myself sing it. So we trade off on verses. It's just a different take on the same song. It was really interesting. There you go. First time ever on KLOS, new version of Hotel California. The author of that song, Don Felder, is here for the takeover. Pretty proud about how that one came out, right? Yeah, it was fantastic. It was a lot of fun being in the studio with the guys from Foreigner and the guys from Sticks and myself and taking a whole new approach to doing the same song. You know, as a matter of fact, Hotel California is the only song that I know of that's been recorded by the same band twice and both times nominated for Grammys. First, the original one, and then the one for uh, Hell Freezes Over that came out in uh, late 90s or something. And then now this is like a third uh, attempt at just making a fun version of it. You know, it's a lot of fun. Are you listening, Grammy people? Let's let's, let's go for three. <laughs> um, are you like, you know, do you keep track of kind of like sort of the legacy of that song? Because, I mean, you're talking about a song that a legitimate case for top five, top ten songs in the history of rock and roll. Like, do you, do you know, like, where Rolling Stone puts it on their top 500 list? Do you follow any of that stuff, or is it just kind of out there in the world? I don't really follow it. Uh, you know, I guess the latest shock for me was about a year ago I played in New York City for the United Nations. And there was uh, about 450, maybe 500 presidents and heads of state from all over the world, different countries, at this performance. And about half of them spoke English, and the other half had no idea if he spoke to them in English. They needed one of those little translator ear cups, you know. So I went on stage and played Hotel California, and everyone in the place stood up and gave me a standing ovation. <laughs> it, it gave me the impact that it, it had such a global impact, that song, that it was known all over the world. As a matter of fact, I got a text two days ago from a friend of mine who was in Buenos Aires sitting in a bar and saying, he wrote this text and said, they're doing the Argentinian version of Hotel California here. So it's great to have been part of writing something and recording something that uh, was so globally accepted. You know? Yeah, I imagine there's some strange places that you've heard that song or over the years and you've been somewhere and all of a sudden it pops on. I've heard a lot of different versions, some of which I would not like to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can bet. All right, uh, so we are going to go back to Gainesville, Florida for this next selection, correct? Yeah, sure enough. Um, you know, one of the bands that was down there uh, when I was growing up, along with Tom Petty and myself, was a band called the Almond Joys, or the Spotlights, and it had Greg and Dwayne Almond in it. And we would play together in battles of the bands and play at the Fraternity Rose at the University of Florida, and in the summer we'd go over to Daytona Beach and uh, play the dance clubs and the pier over there. And then also when the Eagles went back down to Miami to record at Criteria Recording Studios, we were working in these hallways there, and there'd be five studios down the way and they'd be clapped in one room and the Eagles in one room, Chicago in another and everybody was recording down there so um, we stayed at 461 Ocean Boulevard, that house, we rented the house thinking that that was like a magical place to be there when you were recording and writing and so uh, one of the selections I chose is Layla which has both Clapton on it which was a huge influence on me and Dwayne Allman the guy that taught me how to play slide guitar so wow, that, Layla. That is excellent, alright here we go, it's KLOS. Right here 
Dwayne Allman back in the day just just loved to show up in the studio and play on people's records, and then he's uncredited on all kinds of classic songs. He was by far the best guitar player in Florida, if not in the United States. Uh, the first guy I ever saw played electric slide guitar and just blew me away. And and uh, to this day, I still admire his uh, slide talent. That guy was a genius. Yeah, he was. Oh, God love the Allman Brothers. All right, uh, it's 95.5 KLOS. Don Felder's here for the takeover. Uh, Don is going to be part of the KLOS concert series. Uh, he's playing at the Greek Theater with uh, Sticks and Foreigner, July 26th. Uh, tickets for that show are on sale now. You should definitely get them. Uh, and Don's got a new CD out, Road Forever. Uh, we've got a copy of the extended edition, and I believe we've got a few that we can give away. Uh, so, caller 25 to 26, 27, let's do that. 800 uh, 955 uh, if you would like Don's new CD. And have you have you started playing shows with the Sticks and the Foreigner guys yet? Well, I've done some shows with Sticks, and we actually got together, all three of us, to work on this version of Hotel California in the studio, and we put together a live medley that we did in New York on television. Uh, it's just been such a delight to be able to work with these guys. They're all nice guys. There's no drama. There's no tension. There's no egos. Just a lot of great musicians and a lot of great music we're playing. That is awesome. We start May 14th, I think. May 14th, and again, uh, July 26th. 26, the Greek Theater here in L.A. Greek Theater, by the way. What a beautiful it's venue. It's my favorite place to go in the summer and sit outside under the stars and listen to music where it's warm and sunny. And just the aroma that takes place in that outside venue is enough to, like, elevate you into, into heaven. What aroma might you be referring to? Oh, hmm. uh, the perfume <laughs> that just kind of permeates the place. Yes. The perfume, the all-natural <laughs> perfume of the Greek Theater. Uh, also voted one of the top ten venues in America by Rolling Stone. Absolutely. And it's beautiful. beautiful. What a great place to see a show. All right, so we're going to roll out on some Foreigner. Don Felder, uh, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome here anytime you've been a friend to KLOS for years and years and years. Thank you so much, Derek. I love KLOS. My favorite station in LA. That's awesome, man. We appreciate it.